What's going on, y'all? It's JD Pakel with On3 today on The Hard Count. We're gonna talk about some fall camp intel down there at Miami. Welcome into The Hard Count, the people show for every single thing that you know and that you love about college football. It happens here on a daily basis. Nick Brake does the heavy lifting. You can help drive the show by subscribing to the channel. Got some fall camp intel for you from what's been going on down there in Coral Gables. A lot of excitement in Coral Gables, as we've talked about multiple times on the show. I jumped in a Twitter space, as I guess it was three or four days ago now, and one, I love the Miami fan base. Two, that spaces was juiced up. So much excitement about this program heading into 2022 in year one under Mario Cristobal. They feel like they got the right guy driving the program. More on that later in this video. But the first point when it comes to what you're seeing right now at fall camp for Miami is this defense looks retooled to where you have more depth at the defensive line and the secondary than you did a year ago. Mario Cristobal, it's been very public, has gone into the portal, gotten some guys that are going to help him right away, and guys that have experience playing at the Division I FBS level. So that's first. Being able to have depth throughout the duration of the season, as physical as football is, as intense as this game is, 12, game, excuse me, 12 games wears on you. And so for these guys to be able to have a, a second line of defense, more or less, that's going to be crucial for them in ACC play. The second thing they're talking about down there is a guy by the name of Nigel Lee Kelly. He is a freshman defensive end, but they're really excited about him. Now, he's still developing physically he's still getting into that college strength program but they think he's going to be a guy that helps them this season is he going to start remains to be seen probably not but he's a guy that you're going to see in situations where it's going to be a third and long or an obvious pass rush situation they think that he's talented enough to where he can help them in those situations so Nigel Lee Kelly a guy to be excited about in Coral Gables it's kind of the buzzword right now in Miami is excitement, excitement, juice, buzz, excitement. I feel like I'm saying that a lot when it comes to the U. The other thing that we got to talk about is Tyler Van Dyke looks as advertised. This isn't necessarily breaking news, but for all that he dealt with a season ago, I've said it multiple times, Tyler Van Dyke at this time last year was getting ready to hold his clipboard was trying to pick out which hat he should wear on the sideline and what kind of eye black he should have going so he could kind of look cool and get some TV time. Next thing you know, Derek King goes down. Tyler Van Dyke jump into this game, wins the starting job over Jake Garcia. The rest is history. Tyler Van Dyke, one of the most eagerly awaited quarterbacks in 2022 because he absolutely flashed. I mean, there was a point in the year where I think maybe after game three or four, he didn't throw less than 300 yards in any of the games throughout the rest of the year. Like, dude balled out statistically. And it's so impressive to me because he had less than ideal circumstances in doing this. Yes, he had Charleston Rambo, which was his go-to receiver. But if you talk about what was going on around the Miami program, yes, he's a starting quarterback, gets thrown in, but is my head coach going to be there? Is my OC going to be there? At what? I mean, how much is this program changing underneath me? Every single game, it feels like we're playing for my head coach's job. It's a lot of pressure. Now, enter in Mario Cristobal, enter in Josh Gaddis, enter in a full offseason for Tyler Van Dyke as quarterback one. That's going to do wonders for his confidence, for his preparation, just knowing what to expect in your second year at the college level. It's going to be a very good thing for him. In addition to that, they have a running back room that is deep enough to support him. Henry Parrish, Ole Miss transfer, Jalen Knight, and the guy they're excited about, they feel like they have... Enough depth to where Tyler Van Dyke, if you don't throw for 300 yards in the game, we're going to be okay. I mean, we want you to play well, don't get it twisted, but we have a running back room to where you can turn and hand it to us if you're just not on that day. If you're not feeling like you got 100% in the tank or for whatever reason the shot's not falling, to use a basketball analogy, you can turn and hand it to these guys. And that just takes so much pressure off a quarterback when he knows I don't have to go out there and do it all by myself today. I got help. Batman has got Robin. Not to disrespect the running back room by calling them Robin and Tyler Van Dyke Batman, but you get where I'm coming from. It's a team sport. To have your teammates help you, that's crucial. In the spirit of talking about your teammates on the offensive side of the ball, 
they are looking for a wide receiver one to step up. Xavier Restrepo, a guy they are raving about, but he is going to be in the slot. He's going to be that possession receiver. He'll be a big contributor, but they need a wide receiver one on the outside to step up and replace what Charleston Rambo was. Now, the guy that they're pointing to and asking to step into that spot is Keyshawn Smith. So for Keyshawn Smith, can you be that guy that fills those shoes? Can you at least take some heat off my guy to where maybe you're wide receiver one on paper and you're a go-to guy, but... Can you just make the defense honor you? Because if you're a wide receiver and you're the wide receiver one and you, the defense has to treat you like that, if they're going to give you wide receiver one level attention, well, then we can run our offense. Then we can actually get into some different schemes and we can be a little more diverse in what we call. And I think that is crucial. That's going to open it up for a strepo. It's going to open it up for the backs. You got to have counters to everything. That's the way that football is. You can't just throw right hook combos the whole game some teams can but I think Miami specifically has to have different answers on offense and so for Keyshawn Smith he's a guy they're asking to step up and step up in a big way in 2022 the last tidbit I want to get to when it comes to Miami as a program is how the vibe has changed around Miami since Mario Cristobal has become the head coach there And it gets thrown around a lot when you get a a new head coach to your program, vibe changing. Hey, the mood's different. It feels different. That's not super surprising. What I think is worth noting is what I was told is there is a new sense of urgency in Coral Gables. There is a new feeling around the practice that, hey, we got to get things done. And that shows in terms of what they do get done because they're getting more reps. I was told the volume of reps they're getting is astronomically higher than it was a season ago. And that does something to you as a player because when you're getting so many reps in a practice, it puts the pressure on you to respond to that. You're not able to sort of take a rep. Okay, I'll get water. I'll hang out. I'll wait a few minutes till my next rep. No, you got to take reps on reps on reps on reps. So you have to stay mentally sharp for a long period of time. And so not only are you physically getting conditioned, you're getting mentally conditioned as well. Because many of you know, in a 60-minute football game, you better have the mental capacity to go the distance. And that's what they're honing right now in Coral Gables with this new sense of urgency, this new volume of repetitions they're getting in practice. So something to be excited about. I have always felt that Miami has all of the juice in the world to be really successful on a national level. I'm not alone in feeling that. A lot of people in Coral Gables feel that way. I would reckon a lot of people within that locker room feel that way. And so to now have the direction of a guy that understands what the U is about, not just Miami, but the U, who's from there, who who played there, who gets it, cannot be overstated. Credit to the administration, credit to Miami as a university for making football a priority and going out and getting their guy and putting resources towards that. So all that's to say, fall camp headed in the right direction. Miami headed in the right direction. A lot to be excited about. Van Dyke slinging it, running back rooms deep, defense, defensive line, secondary looks deep. Nigel Kelly, a name to know, going to contribute this year. It's going to be a good year in Coral Gables. It's going to be a bright future in Coral Gables for years to come. That's it for us here on The Hard Count. We appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter at JD Pakel. Now, this last point is crucial. We are on podcast, both Spotify and on Apple, wherever you get them. It really helps us if you leave a five-star review and then comment as well. So if you comment a question with a five-star review, we will get to it at either a future show or Twitter spaces or something to that effect. But it helps us. So help us help you. That's all I ask. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.